Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Gear 24 here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building a redesign for the Fairchild Republic A10C Thunderbolt 2. The Fairchild Republic A10 Thunderbolt is a single seat twin turbofan engine straight wing jet aircraft developed by Fairchild Republic for the United States Air Force. It is commonly referred to by two nicknames, Warthog or Hog. Although the A-10's official name comes from the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt, a World War II fighter bomber effective at attacking ground targets, the A-10 was designed for close air support of friendly ground troops, attacking armored vehicles and tanks and providing quick action support against enemy ground forces. It entered service in 1976 and is the only production-built aircraft that has served in the U.S. Air Force that was designed solely for close air support. Its secondary mission is to provide forward air control or airborne support by directing other aircraft in attacks or ground targets. Aircraft used primarily in this role are designated the OA-10. The A-10 was intended to improve on the performance and firepower of the A-1 Sky Raider. The A-10 was designed around the 30mm uh, GAU-8 Avenger rotary cannon. Its airframe was designed for durability with measures such as 1,200 pounds of titanium armor to protect the cockpit and aircraft systems, enabled it to absorb a significant amount of damage and continue flying. Its short takeoff and landing capability permits operation from airship close to the front lines, and its simple design enables maintenance with minimal facilities. The A-10 served in the Gulf War, uh, Operation Desert Storm, the American-led intervention against Iraq's invasion of Kuwait, where the aircraft distinguished itself. The A-10 also participated in other conflicts such as in Grenada, the Balkans, Afghanistan, Iraq, and against the Islamic State in the Middle East. So, yeah, the... Um, a10C Thunderbolt. The A10C is the current variant that is in widespread uh, service across the U.S. Air Force. And this aircraft is a special kind of importance to me because this is the main aircraft at the base I am located at. So I work on this aircraft and pretty much see it every day. So it does have a special place in my heart. And uh, I really went all out with this one, trying to give you guys the most accurate um, design I could really make for the A10. And uh, all the little details, everything like that, are all things that are actually on it. So I went really far in depth and really tried to give you guys the best design I really could. Um, so this thing came out really good, really awesome design. Um, it is in a squadron color of the 354th Fighter Squadron, which is the Bulldogs, which is one of the main squadrons out in my base. Uh, this is the squadron that goes actually out and fights the battles and stuff like that. So it is an actual active duty um, squadron that is out um going out and on deployments and stuff like that to the uh, middle east so really cool aircraft uh personally one of my favorites for sure and uh definitely a privilege to be able to work on this aircraft and see it almost every day though it is kind of a pain in the ass at times so anyways really nice aircraft and a nice full redesign for it i think this thing came out really good and is going to look amazing on any of your worlds uh just it's, it's, it's an awesome aircraft, what can I say? Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at it. We have obviously both the landed and in-flight version available for you guys in this tutorial, so you'll be able to have a combination of both. Um, so start off with, we have the front here, nose of the aircraft, with the uh, front uh, gun, that 30mm gun, the iconic uh, gun that the uh, Warthog does support. And the gun system itself goes all the way back to about this point here, right before the leading edge of the wing, so you can just imagine how big that gun is in here. Uh, with the whole drum and all that stuff for the ammunition, it's pretty extreme. It's a huge gun, and really, you when you see the gun actually exposed, you realize, wow, this thing is actually built around the gun. It's pretty wild. We have the cockpit here, and uh, the cockpits actually do have an orange tint on the front of them, uh, with the glass kind of similar to that of like the F-16s and stuff like that. It's supposed to absorb radar wave waves, but really an A-10's not meant to be stealth at all, so who knows why it's there, maybe kind of like shades I guess for the pilot who knows um but yeah we have the wings here so this is the uh kind of newer version of the wings which uh slant up up and they're not a drastic slant um at all on the aircraft they're pretty uh they're pretty mellow slant and that's what we have there on the sides there we then have the engines so these are the turbofan engines uh basically the large um, intakes there for the aircraft and as we continue our way back we have the tail here and as I mentioned this is done the, the um Bulldogs um, color scheme here, so we have the blue kind of tail flash here, uh, which would have the little bulldog there, and um, just all the detail around the, the uh, back here. Right here would be the um, Magicom that the aircraft responds to, or corresponds to, so the little shield symbol, and then right here is the tail number uh, that would be located down here. 
And then we have DM, which is the base identifier. So this aircraft, DM being based out of Davis Mothin Air Force Base. So pretty cool aircraft. I think it's going to be an awesome addition to any of your fleets. I mean, A-10 Warthog is just a very well-known and very well-respected aircraft and its role and what it's able to do. Uh, we have obviously the landed version here, uh, which you can see the landing gear is off to the side as it actually is. And then we also have the in-flight version, so you'll be able to have both those for your guys' um, worlds. Anyways, that's it for this overview. Let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alright guys, going ahead and moving into our first layer, we'll be going ahead and start off with layer number two. Now we'll start off layer two because we get a better basis for uh, the aircraft to kind of build off of future layers. And layer one's mainly just doing all the ordnance mounted onto the uh, pylons uh, on the aircraft. So uh, this layer here is going to give us a nice setup and help us um, be able to easily progress through the um, rest of the build. But anyways, for us to uh, go ahead and get started, a few things I want to mention is if you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, the way I like to structure these tutorials, I like to do half on, ca on camera, half off. What this means is rebuilding the entire centerline of the aircraft and then the entire right side. For the most part, this aircraft is symmetrical besides a few minor things here and there. And once we get to those things, I will talk about them um, in detail when we do get to that point. However, for the most part, as I said, a lot of this stuff is going to be um, different, so you don't have to worry too much about, um, about that. Anyways, um, also, if you want to build the landed version of this aircraft, that will be available in this tutorial. It will just be add done as an add-on to the vehicle. So to make sure that you have this the correct height off the ground when you build it, you want to make sure that the aircraft here is standing three blocks tall. Um, so you can see here we have three blocks uh, going up like this um, for the between this level here and the ground level. Very important, obviously, because if it is one block too high, too low, it's not going to sit properly on the ground. So make sure that you start layer two here, three blocks total off the ground. Anyways, let's get started. So for our center line here, we're going to place down a stone brick top slab. And we're going to then place down a wither skeleton skull coming off the front of the top slab. We're going to go, and go back from it. We're going to place down two yellow concrete blocks up like so. Followed by a light gray shulker box facing downwards. And then a dark gray like that. You can see from the dark gray, light gray shulker boxes, we have three blocks of space down between the ground and this. Again, that's kind of referring back to if you want to do the landed version. Continuing on, we're going to place down a polished black stone upside down stair. Followed by one two, three, and four polished black stone top slabs, then a row of one, two, three, and four stone top slabs, followed by four andesite walls, three stone top slabs, three iron trap doors. We're going to skip a space back, place down a andesite wall, and then a stone upside down stair like that on the back there, and that right there is going to make up your center line. After that's done, going ahead and going back up to the front, we're going to place down an iron trap door come off the shulker box here to the side, and we also want to place down a birchwood sign on the side of the top slab like so. From this point, we're going to then place down a stone top slab back, followed by a row of one, two polished black stone top slabs. And right here, we do have our first difference. Over here on the left side, we're going to be placing down a polished black stone uh, upside down stair right here. And then over here on the right side, we're going to place down a polished black stone top slab. So we do have that difference on both sides there. Make sure you take that into account when you go to do the other side. From this point here, we're going to take our stone top slabs. We're going to go ahead and go back one, two, three, four, five, and six top slabs back. We're going to then place down a stone upside down stair facing this direction, just like that. And then going back from the stair, we're going to place down one, two, and three upside down stairs back from it, like so. We're going to then take our stone top slabs, place down one and two stone top slabs back, then two iron trap doors after those top slabs, like that. Once that's done, go ahead and go into the side here of the third stone top slab. So come back from the side here, the third stone top slab, we're going to place down a uh, birchwood trap or birchwood sign. And then we're going to place down three iron trap doors. What we can do next is we can go ahead and use our give command and give ourselves a debug stick. If you do not have access to a debug stick, you can very simply use birchwood trap doors instead. But the debug stick here will allow us to actually close, or technically in this case open, the trap doors so that they sit uh, flat against those stone top slabs like that and create this little um, this little kind of panel that sticks down here. Um, windshield or something like that, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, so that's going to sit right there. And then after we have that all done, we're going to then take our stone top slabs, go back one, two, three. And we're going to then place down one, two, and three iron trap doors. Next row out to the side here, we're going to place down a row of one, two, three, and four and the walls back, and then a iron trap door. And we want to go and then take our stone stairs, and we're going to place down a row coming off this in these andesite walls, a row of four stone upside down stairs. So one, two, three, and four upside down stairs just like that and then after that's done uh, we want to go and then place down a row four of stone full blocks coming off those stairs and also an iron trap door come off this stair here on the end going back 
After we have that done, we're going to then place down a light gray shulker box in this section here, upside down like that. And then going back from it, we're going to place down a stone stair, like so. Then going toward the front here, we're going to place down a stone full block that sticks out past here. And then we're going to place down a skeleton skull to all, to, uh, all three sides. Now over here on the right side, um, we do have a difference here, and this is going to be the tip here. So over on the left side, the tip of that is actually going to be the um, stone color. But we actually want to go ahead and grab ourselves some black concrete and some wither skeleton skulls. And over here on the right side, this block right here is going to be black concrete, and then a wither skeleton skull to the sides there. And that's only going to be for the little tip there of the um, kind of engine, or I say engine, uh, the uh, kind of wheel pods here on the wings. After we have that all complete though, uh, we then want to go and grab a polished black stone stair. We're going to place it down to the side here. And we want to go and then take our stone stairs and go back one, two, and three. Back just like that. Followed by an iron trap door. So an iron trap door back. And we're going to go and then place down a second iron trap door back from that. After we have that done, we want to go and then take our andesite walls. We're going to place down one, two, three on those three stone uh, upside down stairs and then we're going to place down two more iron trap doors back so one two then our next row to the side here we're going to place down a row of three one two three of iron trap doors followed by additional two so row five we then want to place down two andesite walls again along the side here and we're going to then place down a, a um, we then want to go ahead and actually uh, place down a row of two of iron trap doors after it so one two after we get to this point here we're going to go ahead and skip a space over from these uh, from these uh, andesite walls, and we're going to go ahead and place down there an andesite wall followed by two back, and a skeleton skull coming off the andesite wall facing toward the front there, like so. And once we have that all done there, that is going to basically do it for what we have for layer two. Looking at it from above here, this is what we should have for the basis of this aircraft setup and good to go. Um, and just make sure you take into account the differences uh, with that polished blackstone upside down stair there, and this blue black tip here for the wheel pod. And once you have those all done and good to go, then that's going to pretty much wrap up what we have there for layer two. And with that, let's go ahead and move down to layer number one. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer one. Layer one here is going to basically just deal with the armaments, and this is something that you guys can completely change um, for your guys' selves. If you want to do kind of a different loadout um, than this, you can obviously go ahead and do so. However, we're going to be going ahead and doing the exact loadout we have over there on that model, which is based off of a real combat loadout that I was able to find pictures of, of an A-10. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go, ahead and go to the bottom here. We want to go ahead and go to these stone upside down stairs. We're going to place down a row of three of the gray terracotta. Uh, coming off those blocks. We then want to place down a wither skeleton skull like so, coming off the front here. And we're going to then place down a stone button underneath this gray concrete block. Same thing on the back here. And also to the sides here, these gray concrete blocks, or these gray, gray terracotta blocks, I should say. And we want to go and then place down a wither skeleton skull like so. And that's going to do it for our first uh, little uh, bombs there. We're going to then go to the side. We're going to place down a sandstone wall. Coming off that sandstone wall, we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate. And we want to then place down a end rod coming off the fence gate like that forward. We're going to go and then grab our uh, die right walls. We're going to place down a die right wall back, followed by a row of two of smooth quartz, and then a gray terracotta block there on the back. On this gray terracotta block, we're going to go and place down a dark oak fence gate on the two sides here. Dark oak signs coming off those fence gates, like so. We're going to go ahead and also place down a wither skeleton skull on this the back of this block like that. We then want to drop down to a dark oak wood trap door on the bottom here. And we're going to place down a dark oak wood sign like so. And also a dark oak wood sign coming off this iron trap door up above for the previous layer. Once we have that done, uh, we then want to go and take birchwood buttons. And we're going to place down birchwood buttons here on the this block here. And then the sides of these two blocks just like that. After that's done, uh, since this is going to be the in flight version to begin with, we're going to place down a iron trap door coming off the bottom here of this stone block and actually we're going to go and make this a dark oak wood trapdoor there. So dark oak wood trapdoor over on the right side, on the left side over here an iron trapdoor. We're going to go then place down two polished black stone stairs back to back like so on the bottom here with birchwood signs there along the sides of those stairs. So just like that. And then after that we want to go ahead and then place down a stone slab. Going back, followed by an iron trapdoor. And we then want to go ahead and grab an item frame and also an iron bar. We're going to place down an iron frame here on the bottom of the shulker box with an iron bar in the item frame just like that. And after that is all complete there, um, we're going to go and move on to our next pylons out to the sides here. 
Next pylons here, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, nothing too cr crazy. I believe these are actually JDAMs, if I remember correctly. Uh, but all we're going to do for these is we want to go ahead and place down a row of two of quartz full blocks. So one, two, like this, followed by two direct walls going forward, and then a skeleton skull there on the front, and a skeleton skull on the back. We're going to do the same thing right here. Two smooth quartz blocks, skeleton skull, two direct walls forward, and a skeleton skull like that for those. And then our last uh, pylons on the, end, on the ends here are going to be actually air-to-air -air missiles. And this is going to be a row of 1, 2, 3, and 4. Stone brick top subs on the bottom of the anisite walls and the skeleton skull. And then coming off the sides here, we're going to go ahead and grab fence gates, some skeleton skulls, and some end rods for this. And what we're going to do here is we're going to place on a fence gate of birchwood. Come off these two stone top slabs on the outer sides like so. And we then want to go ahead and place down a row of two of end rods between those fence gates. So one, two, and one, two. And we then want to place down a skeleton skull coming off these two fence gates like that going forward. So just like that on both ends there. And right there, we'll basically do it for those missiles there on the edge of the pylon. And with that, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer one for the build. As you can see, we have, we have, we'll have our armaments loaded up and good to go. And we're just going to take what we did on the right side here and flip it over to the left side. Anyways, that right there is going to complete our uh, layer one. And with that, let's move up to layer number three. All right, guys, going ahead and moving into our next layer here. We have layer number three. For layer three, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down an andesite wall on top of this... Um, this uh, wither skeleton skull like so. And then going back from the anisite wall there, we want to go and place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Uh, stone blocks back, followed by a black concrete block on top of your last iron trap door here. And we want to go and then grab our stone blocks and go back 1, 2, 3, and 4 stone blocks back, 4 stone top slabs, and that iron trap door there on the very end. After that's all done, going back up to the front here, um, we want to go and then place down a skeleton skull to the side of this anisite wall. And using a debug stick, we can go ahead and change the direction of the wall, which I do recommend doing to kind of make it connect to those skeleton skulls and make it a little bit more, you know, nicer of a transition there on the front. We then want to go to the sides here. We're going to place down a polished black stone wall and then a anisite wall that goes back from that. So it's going to be an anisite wall here. On both sides like so and again we can do the same technique here where we go ahead and have the wall uh, face toward the front there as well so again kind of create a little bit better of a um, transition there up on the front there using the debug stick again if you have access to it we're going to then uh, build our both sides here now both our sides are different in this section here so do pay close attention to what we do on both sides we're going to basically build it back to the um, start of the uh, horizontal or the wings I would say the leading edge of the wings so this right here is all going to be different on both sides to begin with though we want to go ahead and start off by going ahead and placing down a coal uh, on the left side here we'll start on the left side we're going to place down a coal or block after the stand side wall followed by a sh light gray shulker box on its side with a polished black stone button coming off of it we're going to then place down a stone block an item frame with a black banner in the item frame rotate so it's facing upwards like so then another light gray shulker box a furnace a stone block with a trip bar hook to the side, and then we're going to place down one, two, three, four, and five stone blocks back until we get to our lean edge here of the wing. We're going to go ahead and go to the air side, and we're going to go ahead and build back the same length, but this time we're going to go ahead and do what's over here on the right side. For this, we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, and three stone blocks, followed by a light gray shulker box, a coal ore block. We're going to go ahead and follow this up by placing down a stone stair, so we're going to grab one of those. And we're going to place down a stone stair here. We're going to go ahead then, uh, actually sorry, it should be upside down, so an upside down stone stair. We're going to go ahead then place down a stone block, followed by a stone stair. And then we're going to go ahead and go one, two, and three stone blocks back. So you can see here, we do have the differences on both sides here. So if you need to take some time to make sure you get this right. This is the right side of the fuselage here in the front. And then over here is going to be the left side. So do pay close attention. Those differences are present on the actual aircraft itself. And that's why we do have them. Anyways, from this point here, both sides are going to be back to sim being semi or symmetrical. So um, both sides will be the same here. To go ahead and get started with, though, we are going to be going ahead and taking our stone blocks. And from both sides here, going back, we're going to place down an additional one, two, three, four, five blocks back. Once we get to these, uh, or actually, sorry, five, six, seven, and eight stone blocks back. Once we get to the black concrete block on both sides here, we're going to have a stone stair, followed by a stone full block. And then one, two, three, and the side walls back. 
After that, we're going to go to these uh, middle two stone top slabs. So we have that row of four. We're going to go in the middle two, place down two iron trap doors like this to the side. And we're going to then place down four more rows of two. So one, two, three, and four. So you should have a total of five rows. Actually, one more row. So you can have a total of six rows of two out to the side there. We then want to go ahead and place down a stone upside down stair on the end here. Followed by a stone full block. And then there's stone upside down stair like that going toward the front there. We're going to go then grab a polished anti top slab and place it down on the side of that stone stair. And then also on the sides of these blocks, we're going to go and grab ourselves some iron frames, some stone blocks, and some birchwood signs. We're going to place down two iron frames here, one on the stair, one on this full block. And in those iron frames, we're going to place down stone blocks, and then we're going to place down birchwood signs on the side of those stone blocks as well. And that right there will basically be it for that on the back horizontal stabilizers and vertical stabilizers. And we're going to go now move into our wings. To begin with, we're going to place down an iron trap door here. And after that, we're going to go and place down a daylight detector and turn this to night mode. We then want to place down a stone slab, followed by a uh, row of one, two, and three. Stone stairs back. So you have a row three. We're going to go back four, and then five. So just like that. And that will be basically the same thing there on both sides. After we have uh, that done, we're going to then place down an iron trap door to the side here, followed by a daylight detector, turn it to night mode, and then a row of one, two, three, and four stone slabs back like so. We then want to go ahead and place down a row of one, two, three, and four iron trap doors on the top portion of the blocks there, so just like that. Uh, after we have that done, we're going to then place down a daylight detector coming off this one, turn this to night mode. And we want to go then place down a row of one, two, three stone slabs back and then a daylight detector like this on the rear and turn that to night mode. We are going to go and then go to our next row to the side. We're going to place down a daylight detector on top of this block here, turn it to night mode. And over here on the right side, we're going to do the same thing, except we want to go and also place a polished black stone button on top of this stone block. So that's going to be over here on the left side and the left side only. So just make sure you take that into account as well. Uh, on the side of the daylight detector, we're going to grab a birchwood sign and place a birchwood sign here like so. And we're going to go and then take our stone slabs, place down one, two, three back, followed by a daylight detector, turn it to night mode, and then an iron trap door. We then want to place down an iron trap door up here in the front, followed by a daylight detector back from it, turn it to night mode, then two stone slabs back, and then two iron trap doors back. Next row here, uh, we're going to go ahead and place down a iron trap door. Actually, we're just going to go and do a daylight detector. We're going to then follow this up with placing down a row of two of stone slabs back, two iron trap doors. We're going to do the same thing again. Daylight detector, turn it to night mode, two stone slabs, two iron trap doors. And then again, one more daylight detector like this to the side. And turn it to night mode. And then we're going to place down two stone slabs and then two iron trap doors. So just like that. After we have that done there, uh, we're going to then transition to a stone slab like so. And we want to go and then place down a additional three stone slabs back. So one, two, three. And this uh, iron trap tour here, we're actually going to go and do a daylight detector and turn that to the night mode as well in that location, like so. Once we get to this point, we're going to go ahead and make sure we grab some stone brick stairs, some polished andesite stairs, polished andesite slabs, and also stone brick slabs. So for this section here, we're going to place down a stone slab on the front here. Followed by a stone stair, a stone brick stair, and then a polished andesite stair. And then come out the back of the polished andesite stair, an upside down polished andesite stair, upside down stone brick stair, and an upside down stone stair coming off those. And we then want to go ahead and just place down a row of three of stone top slabs, or basically of top slabs coming off those stairs. So one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three. And then on the very edge here, uh, we're going to take our stone stairs and our shulker box. We're going to place down a stone upside down stair on the ends here. So right here, followed by a upside down shulker box in this direction, in this section here. So upside down like that. And then a, another stone upside down stair like so. So it should look like this here on the wing tip. And once we get to this point on the outer side here of the wing, we're going to go ahead and grab some item frames here. And we're going to go ahead and grab a uh, birchwood sign. We're going to grab some white stained glass and... Again, as I mentioned, the item frames, and we're also going to need a polished black stone button. And on the bottom here, there is a um, item frame that's going to be going there. We're going to go and grab some of these iron bars for that. 
Now what we want to do for this section is we're going to be going ahead and going to the outside of the wing. We're going to place down an item frame on the side of the circle box, a white stained glass block in it, and a birchwood sign over it, and then a polished black stone button on the stone stair going toward the back. On the bottom here of the circle box, we're going to place down an item frame and then an iron bar in the item frame, like so, for the flare dispensers. Anyways, that right there is going to conclude what we have there for layer number three for the build. Looking at it from above here, this is what you should have, and as you can see, we're starting to get the shape coming together. Anyways, that right there is it for layer three. Let's move on to layer number four. Alright guys, before we go and continue one, one thing I want to add on also from this layer is that over here on the right side, the right wing, uh, we're going to go ahead and go to the stair here. We're going to place down two end rods coming off it and a chain like that. And that's going to be on the right side here and the right side only. Left side, obviously not having it. So it should look like this here from above there with both sides on that wing. So just add that little portion there. Anyways, with that all done, let's go ahead and move on to our next layer. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer 4 to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a polished andesite slab on top of this stone block here in the front, followed by a polished andesite stair back. We're going to then place down a uh, block of coal ore, two stone blocks back, and then one, two, three, and four black concrete blocks, or a space of four if you do want to do an interior for this build. I'm going to go ahead and leave this uh, closed off with a row of four black concrete, as I'm not going to be doing an interior for this build in particular. We're going to go then place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Stone blocks back. A stone stair on the back here with an item frame. A black concrete block in the item frame and a birchwood sign over it. One thing I forgot to mention early on um, is that if you are on Java, you can go ahead and do the signs over the item frames. If you're on Bedrock, you're not able to do that feature. So if that's the case, just go ahead and do the item frames and disregard the signs. So uh, my apologies for not putting that in there earlier. But uh, now you guys know in case you guys were wondering, but probably still get comments about it. Going ahead and continue on, uh, we're going to do both sides the same way. So again, both sides are different um, for the aircraft. So we're going to go and cover both sides here separately. Um, so to begin with, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone slab over here on the left side. Uh, coming off the stand side stair. A stone stair, stone corner stair, stone full block, and then a second stone full block. On the second stone block, full block, we're going to place down an item frame with a black concrete block in the item frame rotated to form a diamond shape. And then a birch would sign over the side of that block like so if you're on Java. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone block after that. A stone stair. A stone full block. This is going to have an item frame on the side with a banner rotated to the side here like so. A black concrete block with a stone button coming off of it. Another stone block. Item frame with a black banner in it rotated so it's facing toward the black um, concrete block. A stone upside down stair like so. And we're going to go ahead and stop at this point right here. And so that's going to be the left side. Over here on the right side, we're going to go ahead and start off by placing down a stone slab next to this stair. A stone stair back. A stone corner stair. And we want to go ahead and then place down a row of one and two stone blocks back. On this stone block here, we're going to place down an item frame. Black concrete block in the item frame. Rotate a diamond like that and a birchwood sign on the side of it like so. So the same thing we did over there on the left side. We're going to go ahead and place down a, uh, another stone block back. And we're going to go then place down a stone stair here. After that, we want to go and then place down a stone block item frame. And we're going to go and then place a black banner in the item frame, like we did before, and rotate it to the side like so. A black concrete block. Again, like we did before, a stone block. And then go ahead and grab our item frame again. We're going to go and do the same technique here with our banner. Place down a stone block. After the black concrete block, a item frame, and a black banner in the item frame, rotated so it's facing toward the front there, followed by a stone block, and we're going to then place down a skeleton skull, which will be coming off the side there of that stone block, like so, over here on the right side. Anyways, at this point right here, both sides go back to being symmetrical, so we're going to go and continue on. So, uh, going back from this point on both sides, we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 stone blocks back. And then we're going to take our andesite wall walls and start on top of this one from the previous layer. We're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 andesite walls back, followed by a stone stair like so. And then a skeleton skull on the sides there of that stone stair, just like that on the rear there. After we have that all complete there, uh, for our horizontal stabilizers, we're going to go ahead and start off by going ahead and taking our daylight detectors. We're going to place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 daylight detectors here. Turn these all to night mode like so. And we want to go and then take our stone slabs, place down one, two, three, four, five stone slabs to the side here like so. And then one, two, three, four, and five polished andesite slabs. We're going to go ahead and then place down a polished andesite slab on top of this top slab here. Followed by 
two stone full blocks forward, and then an, an air full block. So you actually have a row of three of stone blocks going forward. And then at this point right here, uh, we want to go ahead and grab ourselves an iron trap door, skeleton schools, and an end rod. We're going to place down a skeleton school on the side of this block here. End rod going forward, near skeleton school, iron trap door here. And we can go ahead and get our, give ourselves a debug stick. And using the same thing we did before for those little uh, windshields there in the front, we can go ahead and close the trap door on the side there to make it a little bit thicker over here on the outer side of the vertical stabilizer. Again, this is uh, something that you can go and replace with a birchwood trap door if needed, or you can just disregard it. It's not that big of a detail that's really that important. Anyways, uh, once we have that all done, uh, we're going to now move into our engine section. So for our engines here, we want to go ahead and start off by going ahead and going to the iron trap doors here. We're going to place down an iron trap door on top of this one fall by a stone upside down stair that comes off of it to both sides like so to form our intakes we're going to go then take our stone stairs and we want to go and place down a row going all the way back of four so one two three so three more so you create a row of four and then one two and three we're going to go then place down an iron bar here in the center on top of the iron trap door there a black concrete block behind it and then we can just take a stone block and fill that space in behind that black concrete block in like so at this point uh, right here, we're going to go and then place down an additional stone block back and actually an additional stone stair on both sides of that full block going back like so. We're going to go then place down a stone upside down stair, come off that stone full block, fall by a stone top slab, and then a skeleton skull here on both sides of that upside down stair like so. And after that's all done there, that is going to basically do it for our engines there. Moving to the left side of the wings here, we do want to go ahead and place down a light gray carpet on top of the shulker box, and the same thing will be done over here to this shulker box as well, just to kind of cover that up a little bit. We then also want to go ahead and go to the right side on top of these three stone brick top slabs. We're going to place down a black carpet on the center, or on this uh, one right here. So uh, it's going to be the first one, so we have the stone brick upside down stair and that top slab, so it's going to be the first top slab here. Item frames to both sides, and then we're going to go ahead and place down a black uh banner in those item frames like that to go ahead and form the U.S. Star National Star Insignia. And then theoretically, it would be on the underside of the right wing over here, but unfortunately, we don't really have, uh, we can't really put item frames here on the bottom of these top slabs and make it look right, so we are going to disregard that. But just know that it would be on the right side here, and if you do want to as well, you can have U.S. Air Force written on the wing here, I'm just putting some black carpet there. Um, but yeah, that's kind of up to you guys. Uh, again, that would say U.S. Air Force, or USAF, and then that would be the National Star Insignia, which we see on uh, a lot of American, or pretty much all American uh, military aircraft. Anyways, that right there is going to complete what we have there for layer four, and with that, let's go ahead and move into layer number five. All right, guys, going ahead and moving into our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five, to go ahead and get started with here, on the front, we're going to place down a acacia wood stair on top of the stone block right after the coal ore. We're going to go ahead and place down a orange stained glass block, followed by a row of three of black stained glass blocks after that. Uh, we then want to go ahead and place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and 7 stone blocks back, followed by 1, 2, 3, and 4 stone slabs, an andesite wall, two light gray shulker boxes, another andesite wall, a stone slab, and then 1, 2, and 3 iron trap doors back like that, and that's going to do it there for the center line. Moving out to the sides here, again we're going to go and do both sides separately as there are differences. For the left side here to begin with, we're going to place down a skeleton skull, come off the side of this acacia wood stair. Followed by a andesite wall, we're going to go ahead and place down a black stained glass pane, and again we can do the technique where we um, use a debug stick to extend the pane so it fills in that space a little bit, a little bit better like so. We then want to place down two stone brick slabs, a stone brick stair with a skeleton skull coming off of it, two stone stairs back, a um, skeleton skull coming off the second stone stair, and then a polished black stone stair back after that. And right there, that's going to basically um, go need. That's pretty much as far back as we're going to need to go, and we can then go ahead and go to the right side and build the right side. We're going to place down a skeleton skull here, and a side wall, black stained glass pane, again, same technique here. Followed by a row of two of stone brick slabs. Uh, make sure that glass pane does get corrected again if it does go back to its normal uh, configuration. Then a stone brick stair like so, and then we want to go and place down a row of one and two stone uh, blocks like that, and... We're going to go ahead and place down a polished blackstone uh, stair, like so, and also a skeleton skull here on the side of this second stone block right there. At this point right here, both sides are going to be the same. We're going to go ahead and then just take our stone stairs, go back one and two, stone stairs, two stone slabs back, two daylight detectors back, turn those to night mode. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone 
uh, stair face in this direction and then going back from it one two three stone stairs back so you turn this into a corner stair you have three normal stairs that go back like so and then on the end here we're gonna place a nice stone slab followed by a skeleton skull here at a slight angle like that on both sides there after that's done go ahead and moving into our engines a bit further we're gonna go ahead and place down an iron trap door on top of this stair here use a debug stick to open it to the outside so like so and again you can use birch trap doors instead like that and we're also going to place down an iron trap door on the end, on the outside here and close that as well once we have that done we're going to place down a stone block here on top of this iron bar and we then want to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull coming off this block like so followed by iron bars to both sides like so we're going to then place down our iron trap door to the side here use our debug stick to go ahead and open it like so and if we were replace our iron bar it should actually connect up to it and kind of uh, make a nice design that goes all the way across there connecting up at this point here we're going to go ahead and take our black concrete we're going to place down a row of three of black concrete across followed by an iron trap door on the side here and a debug user debug stick to close that the trap door we're going to go then place down a row of three of stone blocks across again using our debug stick on the side here and use it to close that we then want to take a black concrete block we're going to place it in the center here stone block to both sides followed by another stone block to both sides and then we're going to place down a stone brick wall here in the center followed by a block of netherite and then a wither skeleton skull coming off the block of netherite just like that and then we just want to go ahead and place down a andesite wall to both sides of that block of netherite just like that technically the stone brick wall really isn't needed um, this could be a stone block and the black concrete here isn't needed either so we can just replace that with a stone block as well um, kind of some leftover pieces from when I was uh, initially designing the back of the engines but yeah that right there is basically all you need really for that Anyways, the last thing we have to cover here for this layer is going to be the vertical stabilizers. For this, we're just going to place down a polished nanosite block here, black concrete block, and then grabbing ourselves a coal ore block. We're going to place down a coal ore block here to the side, and then an andesite wall going forward from it. We can then go ahead and take our light gray banners, place down two light gray banners here along the side, on the inside here, and on the outside of the aircraft, we're going to only very simply place down a stone button on the side here of this coal ore block. Anyways, after that is all complete there, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer number four for the build. And looking at it from above here, this is what we should have so far for this aircraft. Anyways, with that, let's go ahead and move into layer number five. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer five. For layer five, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go and place down a stone slab. That's going to go on top of this orange stained glass block, just like that. After that, we want to go and then place down two black stained glass blocks back from that. A narrow brick stair, narrow brick slab, iron trap door, a daylight detector. A andesite wall and on top of this andesite wall we are going to place down a stone pressure plate like so and then a wither skeleton skull directly after that on the top there of the spine of the aircraft also on the rear here on the uh, this section here which we call the doghouse we're going to place down a stone pressure plate two iron trap doors or sorry no, two stone buttons and then an air pressure plate there on the end like so so that's going to do it that there for that section Going back up to the front here, we're going to work our way out to the sides by placing down two black stained glass panes coming off the two side of those two black stained glass blocks. And then a wither skeleton skull like this on a slight angle to both sides of this narrow brick stair. And that right there will basically complete the front there. You're going to do the same thing there on both sides like that. After we have that all done, go ahead and move into our engines here. We're going to go and place down a row of one, two, three, four, five stone blocks back. And over here, we're going to go do the same thing. So one, two, three four five stone blocks like our stone stairs like that we're going to then place down an iron trap door like so iron bar directly behind it and a black concrete block and uh, we then want to place down two stone blocks back from that we then want to place down a stone stair stone slab coming off the stone uh, stair and then a skeleton skull to both sides of the stone stair like that after we have that all done there, uh, that's going to pretty much wrap it up for this layer. Again, taking a look at it from above there. Um, or actually, sorry, that's going to do it for that section. We do have the in, uh, the vertical stabilizers to do. For this section, super simple. Andesite wall here on the front. We're going to go ahead and then place down two stone blocks back. And then a uh, stone brick wall here on the end. And then inside here, again, two light gray banners there. Um, like so. And after that's all done there, that's going to basically do it for layer number uh five and with that let's go ahead and move on to layer number six all right guys so i just realized i was messing up the count for the layers a little bit um we are actually going to be moving into our final layers here which are going to be basically layers seven through 
um, nine. So I do apologize for messing up that count. The last layer was layer six. Just make sure you pay attention to the counter in the top left hand corner because that's always going to be accurate on what layer we're on. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and uh, get started with this layer. So the final layer here, pretty simple stuff. All we're going to do is go to the top of the engines here. We're just going to go ahead and place down a row of four of iron trap doors like that on top. And then we're just going to move into our vertical stabilizers. For these, uh, to go ahead and begin with, we're going to go ahead and place down a coal, or sorry, a light gray stained glass paint on the front here. We're going to go and then go to this section. We're going to place down a coal ore block. And we want to go and grab a polished black stone button. And we're going to place down a polished black stone button on the outside of the vertical stabilizer. So the outside like so. And then a stone block back from it. On the inside here, we're going to place down two light gray banners. And we then want to go ahead and place down a narrow stone brick wall on top of this one right here. This section, uh, we're going to go and do our tail flash. So again, as I mentioned, this is going to be for a specific squadron. So we have the blue glass pane, and we're going to take some blue concrete blocks, which we'll go ahead and grab. And we're going to place down a row of blue concrete blocks back from that glass pane. And again, you can change this to whatever color you, colors you guys want, but this is, again, specific squadron, the 354 fighter squadron. And we're also going to place down a uh, birchwood button on both sides of that blue concrete block like that for the little uh, bulldog logo. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone brick wall up like so. Up on top here, a daylight detector. On top of this first block here, turn it to night mode, and then a stone slab directly back from it like that to go make the top there of the vertical stabilizer. And once you have that all done, that's going to pretty much wrap up what we have there for the in-flight version for the build. And from this point on, we're going to go ahead and move into the landed version, showing you guys how to put the landing gear on the aircraft. But that right there is going to do it for the in-flight model. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and move into the uh, landing gear. And real quick before moving to landing gear, I do want to mention one thing also. Uh, we do have the DM here, which is the base identifier for this aircraft, Davis Moth and Air Force Base. Um, you can go ahead and change this to whatever lettering you guys want, but the uh, D and the M are just going to be positioned on the side here. And again, this is specific to this aircraft squadron, as this is where the aircraft is based out of. So just kind of keep that in mind when you do uh, go ahead and build these. Um, but again, you can change whatever you want. You can change it to a different base near you. Um, you can change it to whatever letters you guys want, your initials, who knows. Um, and you can do whatever tail flash color you guys want. And you can do pretty much whatever color you want because you have glass and concrete, which are available in pretty much all the colors. So uh, you have a lot of playability with that, but I just wanted to show you guys how to do that. I'm not going to show you guys how to make these banners exactly. There's plenty of tutorials online that do show you guys how to make those. Um, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for that. And we're going to go ahead now move into the landing gear for this aircraft. All right, guys, so going ahead and move into the landing gear. We're going to be going ahead and start with our front wheel. For our front wheel here, we're going to be going ahead and go into the right side. And we're going to place down a stone stair like this, coming off that stone slab followed by a second stone stair, and then we're going to then place down a polished black stone stair with a polished black stone top slab coming off the bottom of it. We then want to go ahead and go to the inside here. We're going to go and delete uh, these two top slabs here, this top slab, and this one here. So we're going to delete this space here and break that area open. We then want to go ahead and place down a quartz stair in this um, position here, followed by a diet wall that comes off of it, and then we're going to place down birchwood signs coming off the side of the wall and the stair. On the bottom of this wall, we're going to place down an upside down stair like so. And we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a um, end rod. And we're going to place down an end rod that comes down like that. And we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a block of coal. And we're going to place down a block of coal here on the bottom like so. We're going to go then grab a uh, lever, place it down to the side here like so. And then grabbing a skeleton skull. We're going to place down a skeleton skull coming off this lever here to the side. And also a skeleton skull coming off the back or the front there of that stair there. We then want to go ahead and also grab a birchwood fence gate, place down a fence gate here, for, uh, open it toward the end rod there, and we're going to go then place down birchwood signs here on the sides of the fence gate, so like so. We then want to place down iron trap doors, uh, or actually we're going to go ahead and take this stone um, top slab here, and we're actually going to replace this with a stone upside down stair like so. And we want to go then place down two iron trap doors that go down like so. And again, using our debug stick, we can go ahead and use our uh, debug stick to go ahead and open these trap doors so that they s go down like this and create this back panel here for the landing gear door. Now again, this uh, you can use virtual trap doors there as well for this situation. Those will work as well. Um, at this point here, we also have a banner that we can place on the side of the wheel, uh, which is a pretty simple design here, which is going to be very simply this white banner. That's going to go on the side here. So to make it white banner, black border, black horizontal line for the center. And you're going to place it down on the left side of the wheel. And pretty straightforward stuff and on the inside here uh, we really can't do too much in here um, for the wheel well so let's go and take our some iron trap doors and just place it down across the uh, 
top of those two spaces right there. But anyways, that right there is going to do it for the front landing gear. One thing also, uh, almost forgot, we do want to take some stone slabs. We're going to place it on top slab on the bottom of this second stair here, and then an iron trap door forward for that um, door that opens up to the side there. But that right there is going to be uh, basically that, or basically it for the front landing gear. And with that, we're going to go ahead and move into the rear ones. All right, guys, so going ahead and moved into the rear wheels. We're going to be going ahead and going down to this section here. And we're going to go and delete these uh, polished black stone stairs right there this stone top slab and this iron trap door. We're going to go and then break these four blocks on the inside here out like so. We're going to go and start off by placing down a row of two of quartz slabs here, a diorite wall that comes down, and we want to go and then place down a quartz stair, like so, coming down from that diorite um, wall there. And on the back here, we're just going to place down a smooth quartz slab as well. After this, we're going to place down another diorite wall that comes down like so, a smooth stone top slab there on the bottom, and we then want to grab a skeleton skull and place down the skeleton skull coming off the front there of that wall. Followed by a stone slab coming off the back here, or the side toward the rear, uh, like that. We're going to drop down like so, place down a lever, flick it toward the front slab like so. We then want to place down a birchwood fence gate coming off the back of the stair, opened up toward the stair. And then we're going to place down a light gray banner coming off the fence gate like so. If, that's, if uh, you're doing this uh, on Java, if you're able to do this on Bedrock, you probably won't be able to place the banner in an item frame in the same block space. So if that's the case, I would prefer that you guys just do the light gray banner. Uh, in this case, I think it would look better for what we're trying to do there. So that's why I would recommend. Anyways, at this point here, we're going to then place down a polished blackstone top stair upside down. Stair on top of it, and then two stairs on the back of those two stairs like so to go ahead and make that wheel. And I'm going to go ahead and grab some materials real quick, which we'll be using to go ahead and kind of make this wheel a little bit nicer, uh, basically in the terms of using some uh, banners. So that right there is going to pretty much do it for the main structure there for that uh, wheel section. And I'm going to go ahead and grab some extra materials here, and we'll go ahead and finish off that wheel. All right, guys, so to go ahead and make those banners and then the wheel, super simple to do. If you've done some of my aircraft tutorials before or some of my tutorials in general, you may, may have seen this design. But we're going to go ahead basically you need a loom, two black banners, two white die for black die. We're going to go ahead and place our loom down, go into our loom, place our black banners and our white die. We're going to go ahead and select our first banner, the vertical line on the left side of white die for our first banner, and then the vertical line on the right side here for our second one. We're going to go ahead and take each of these banners, put it back into our loom, and our black die, and we just want to select the line across the bottom horizontally, and the line across the top there for our banner. Same thing here, line across the bottom, line across the top like that to go and make those two banners. And these banners here, very simply, are just going to go ahead and go on the side of those two polished black stone stairs like that. And obviously, you're going to do the same thing over on this side. Put the landing gear, do the same uh, type design. Just flip it over to the other side. And once you have that all complete right there, that's going to complete my design here for the Fairchild A10C uh, uh, Warthog. <laughs> I mean, what, what else to say? Uh, really awesome aircraft. Uh, absolutely love the way it came out. I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. Uh, probably one of the better models not to pat myself on the back too much but probably one of the better models you can find out there um in just terms of detail and accuracy as i really try to go all out especially with being around this aircraft daily i definitely think i got the overall shaping and proportions and just detail correct that you could really get on it so hopefully you guys do enjoy this build and do put it to good use if you do and be using that do i say guys give me proper credit for it. this is me thinking from the side of the build to my channel or this video if this is appearing if it does appear on any social media sites as long as you guys give me proper credit for it, your free for project you guys are working on overall enjoy the build have fun and all that fun stuff with that though thank you guys again so much for watching as always don't forget like comment and subscribe this is gary 2 before and i'll see you guys next time